Hey guys, Darwesh here. I'm showing a demo of Apollo. Apollo is our electromagnetic wave simulator that we're co-designing alongside Zeus, which is our GPU that's in development. Um All right, ladies and gentlemen, Darwesh and Bolt Graphics are back with another demo using their Apollo architecture, which is something used for electromagnetic wave simulation. For those of you who don't know, Bolt Graphics is a GPU startup promising a GPU with expandable VRAM, along with major performance improvements over other mainstream GPU manufacturers in specific workloads, like the workload we're about to cover here. If you're curious about this company, I've made three other videos covering them if you want to go give those a watch as well. In this demo, they're using an FPGA with their GPU Apollo architecture on it against the CPU. Here's the first issue with that. GPUs are orders of magnitude faster than CPUs when it comes to this kind of workload. Why? A GPU has thousands of cores to perform these calculations in parallel, where a CPU like the Threadripper only has 64. Well, 128 threads, but you know what I mean. Because a CPU is meant for general purpose computing. Another thing that makes a CPU so much slower than a GPU is memory bandwidth. Let's use this basic formula to calculate the memory bandwidth of the Threadripper system. So we multiply 3200 mega transfers per second by the 64-bit bandwidth of DDR4 memory. But we convert 64 bits to bytes, which becomes 8 bytes, since we want our answer in gigabytes, and that gives us 25.6 gigabytes per second per channel. But there are 8 memory channels, so if we assume that all of them are populated, we multiply 25.6 by 8, and we get a total memory bandwidth of 204.8 gigabytes per second. Hey, that's pretty fast. Let's check what the memory bandwidth of the RTX 6000 Blackwell GPU is. 1,792 gigabytes per second. If my math is correct, that is a difference of 8.75 fold. But they're using an FPGA. What's the memory bandwidth of that? The Xilinx Alveo U50 FPGA has a bandwidth of 460 gigabytes per second. So still more than double the bandwidth of the Threadripper. A CPU is always at a disadvantage with these kinds of workloads. It's like having 10 men working in a cobalt mine versus 1000 kids working in a cobalt mine. Each child can only do a small amount of work compared to an adult, but there's a thousand of them so they can get way more work done overall. It's also more efficient because you don't have to feed the individual kids as much because they're smaller. Which is analogous to a GPU doing more work more efficiently. Um, we also have hooked up these machines to these uh, power monitors. Um, these power monitors just tell us uh, some useful information about how much power is being used, again, at the wall. This is not a you know software measurement. This is literally like we plug the power supply into this thing. Um, so we have the Threader per machine plugged in over here. And on the right side, we have the Apollo uh, demo machine plugged in. I will just comment briefly that the idle power of the Threadripper hovers at around 100 to 120 watts. Um, this is important as we run the simulation, you'll see power consumption increase, and that's how we kind of measure how efficient um, our hardware and our competitors' hardware and software is. The small form factor machine here, uh, this is like idling at 60 watts. I don't think comparing power draw between the two systems here is valid because one system has a 280 watt Threadripper and the other system has a 75 watt FPGA. It's safe to assume that a bulk GPU system will consume significantly more than 75 watts. I'm going to run, run MEEP. Um, MEEP is an open source um, electromagnetic simulator, an FTTD solver that is, um, I think it's, 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 it's developed by MIT as well as a bunch of other researchers. Um, MEEP is CPU only at this point, so this is a good example of where the industry is today, is where most electromagnetic simulations are done on CPUs. Um, GPUs are becoming interesting to those to those users, um, but for a lot of reasons it's not really in use today. He claims that the industry mostly uses CPUs instead of GPUs for this workload. This is not true. There's a company called Remcom and they have a software called XFTTD and it runs on a GPU. There's also Dassault Systems, I probably didn't pronounce that correctly because it's French, they're the guys who make SOLIDWORKS. They make a software called CSD Studio Suite, which isn't an FDTD solver to be fair. Both of those are EM simulators that run on a GPU and they're in 3D. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead, I'll run this, then I'll run our simulation. Our simulation takes the exact same GDS file um, and, and runs an EM simulation on it. So I'll press enter here, you can get, guys get an idea, there's a command line output that pops up. Um, I'll go on to the Apollo machine and I'll run this demo as well. 
And what you'll notice kind of immediately, the, the big thing, again, this is the, this is the... Well, I mean, that's cool that you can see the sim as it's running. XFDTD and CST Studio can't do that. And I wanted to, so being able to see this kind of immediately in a viewer is really important. This is, just to our knowledge, is the first time anyone's ever been able to do this. this Meep doesn't have this, Lumerical doesn't have this, even for that insane cost. None of the other commercial solvers um, have the support. Yeah, no one else has the ability to view the sim as it's running as far as I'm aware as well. They want to use as much of the hardware as possible to do the fastest simulation, right? Um, if you want to build a viewer in or even output data, it, it reduces the speed of the simulation like significantly. In our case, we, we've solved for both of those use cases, being able to do a fast simulation as well as actually being able to view it as it's running because that's really useful. Okay, fair enough. Being able to design the hardware yourself does give you the ability to be able to process the simulation while outputting the sim to the user at the same time without causing any slowdowns. Um, so this is super cool. This makes a massive difference. Um, if you decide you want to do like a one week simulation or something, you don't have to wait the week to see like, oh man, fuck. Like I, there, there's an issue with like the first 10 time steps. Whoa, Darwish. We do not tolerate that kind of language here, my good sir. Fucking hell, dude. Simulation's running right now and power, you know, I don't know, it's one, 105 watts. I think this peaks at like 110 watts. So it's, you know, four times less power um, for essentially the same performance and a much more use immediately usable viewer output. This, again, what I will say is, despite using a CPU for this kind of comparison, which is out of place and a little deceiving, it's still very impressive what they could do with an FPGA, especially because it's running at a much lower clock speed than their proposed ASIC would, and it's only running one engine. Let's talk about the cost of these things. Um, so the, the first thing I want to say is, you know, we're a hardware company. We want to, we're producing GPUs, um, you know, physical hardware you're going to go buy um, online or in a store. It's really important for us to make the hardware easily accessible, which means low cost. That's really important to us. Um, so the hard, the, the GPUs that we're building Zeus is not going to be very expensive. It's going to be very price competitive with, uh, with Nvidia and Intel AMD and those guys. I spoke about the possible cost of the GPU in a previous video I made, which should pop up above my head somewhere. He goes on to mention that the EM software will be free but proprietary. Um, but what I do want to talk about is actually the pricing on the software side as well, because you do have to go buy the GPUs and then you have to go buy, you know, commercial solvers from companies like Ansys and it's really expensive. So um, what we're doing is a, little, is a little bit different. We're not charging for the software in this case, this EM simulator, yeah, I mean, it is proprietary. Um, but it is included with the hardware. So when you buy the Bolt GPU, um, you don't need to worry about paying a license for the software. It's built in. If anyone actually signed up to test their software, leave a comment below and share your experience. It would be nice if it was open source so we could actually see what's going on under the hood. I mean, I'm a shit programmer, but I still want to see. It's not like competitors copying the code would actually make a difference because they lack the hardware to run it properly. So they would need a Zeus GPU anyway right? If you're curious about how they got that kind of performance, they uploaded a short explaining what's actually going on. How can we get the performance numbers that we do with the, with the fewer number of cores compared to our competitors? And the reason for that is quite simple, is that most modern workloads are memory bound, not compute bound. So we've, we've offset the, the core count with adding more cache per core, and we found that that ratio actually makes a bit, way bigger difference when it comes to optimizing for performance and just throw in a bunch of cores that are underutilized. It's kind of like what AMD did with their 3D vCache on their X3D chips. I was hoping that they would upload another video showcasing a Soundwave sim as they said they would in the comment section. Maybe giving some more insight into their architecture. But I kind of got tired of waiting for that to happen. Despite my harsh criticisms of these guys in the past, we need startups like this to succeed even though they're still extremely suspicious. They'd be less suspicious if they could actually build a fully working GPU and demo that instead. They said they'd do that at the end of the year, so we just have to wait and see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and have an immaculate day.